Hello, I'm Tommy Moore from the Bar Tinsel Lab and I'm going to talk about some of the benefits of using hooks as bare knuckle strikes. Now for a lot of people they write off hooks because they think they are slow and they think there is high risk of damaging their wrist or their knuckles. And I want to show some of the ways in which you can mitigate those risks and you can benefit from some of the natural advantages of hooking blows. So, let's start with myth one. They're slow. People say, well, the shortest distance between two objects is a straight line. Bosh! Which is true. But what you've got to remember is the range. The range in which I would throw a hook is much, much, much closer. So real time, the difference in speed between up and something straight, I wouldn't really do a straight from this distance to give you the idea. When I'm deploying a hook, it's because I'm in hook range. Hooks are only slow if you throw them outside of hook range. If I compare bop to bop, of course the straight will be faster. But unless I'm gloved, unless I'm match fighting, it's very rare indeed you'd throw a long distance hook. So speed is really a non-issue because the distance is the important thing. Hooks tend to come at closer distance, so the speed difference between a straight and a hook is largely a moot point because straights work great from here, kind of shit from here. Hooks work kind of shit from here, great from here. So again, not worth really thinking about. There's no point being the shortest distance between two points brigade because it's absolutely pointless argument in this instance. Another thing people worry about is the damage to their wrist and their fingers. Well, there's some really good mitigating factors for that. So let's take Mr. Face over here. Now, if I throw a hook to the side of the jaw, if I land it square, perfect, perfect knockout hook. If I fuck it up and I'm a bit low, I'll twat him in the neck. Again, that's absolutely cool. No harm done for me, still gonna really injure and hurt him. Or if I fuck it up and I go too high, I'll hit the cheek, but it's quite a fleshy surface on most people. So although there are teeth there, there's enough skin, there is enough flesh that smash, you'll smash in some teeth, but you won't really cut your hand to ribbons, and it's not a hugely hard or tough striking surface. So you're not going to get huge amounts of resistance, so you'd be, able, you'd be absolutely fine. So if I miss an inch below, neck, cool. If I get it on target, fantastic. If I go a bit high, because people move when you try and punch them in the face, it's not disastrous, it'll still really hurt him, won't really hurt me. It's only a danger to me, anything above the eye line, I start to get to bony skull. Okay, so I've got, you know, on an average face, I've got about six to eight inches of margin for error on a hook. On a straight, straight down the pipe to the center of the chin, if I fuck it up just a little bit upwards, if I'm just a centimeter off, I'm gonna end up with my fist smashing into teeth. And while that'll still be very painful and damaging to the opponent, there's short-term effects and long-term effects for that. You know, there's gonna be lacerations, swelling, damage, potentially breakages, because the mouth opens and closes. It's a big fucking flappy object filled with hard barbed things. So when you smash it in the front where there's an opening, there is some degree of risk. Compared to the hook, which comes outside of the mouth, bash, you know, you've always got a degree of cover. So it's a nice, safer shot for your hand that has less chance of going into teeth sitting, or indeed, if you miss a fair bit more, crunch the nose. If you crunch the nose, it's gonna hurt, it's gonna make your eyes water, but anyone that's ever sparred, boxed, fought, you get cracked in the nose, your eyes water a bit, but you can keep going, you absolutely can keep going. So it's a wasted shot, it's a wasted shot. Whereas slugging someone with something hard to the side of the jaw with like a hook, bash, yeah. He's a very tough customer indeed to take too many of those without gloves on. So, from my opinion, in my perspective, I've got a bigger target. You know, I've traded one inch for four inches, so it's harder to miss. If I do miss, I get neck or relatively soft cheek. If I do a straight blow, if I miss just a little bit, I can be in some very dangerous waters, either crushing a larynx down here, you know, crushing, really causing huge amounts of damage if you punch straight on into this, you know, which may be what you want to cause, but you know, again, not all violence is level 10. If you do a straight shot into this by missing a little bit, that can be deadly force. And if you miss just a bit up, you can end up really fucking your fist up 
either in the fight or after the fight as you have to get stitched up, hand swollen, can't work for weeks. Side of the jaw, relatively safe target for bare knuckle and blood. I think one of the main complaints for people when it comes to hooking is where martial artists that have spent a lot of their time doing straight punches, they decide, fuck it, I'll get a heavy bag and be like a boxer, and they'll put on their gloves and the straights will work kind of all right, they'll be fine. But people that aren't used to hooking, but are used to body mechanics, will fire a really powerful turning shot with very poor discipline of the wrist, the shoulder, the elbow, and just fuck it entirely. So do make sure if you're looking to rely on these things, like you're trying to rely on anything, make sure you train it. You know, everything needs training. Palm heels need training. Edge of hand blows need training. Elbows need training. You need to train everything. There is nothing where you can learn the technique and it's with you for life. You should train these things. You should make them as accurate as possible and you should get your alignment as accurate as possible. You should make sure it's as good from your perspective as it can possibly be. So for me, I feel that hooks are often a much safer bare knuckle striking blow. And I advise if you're not used to it, you know, move into palm territory, move into palm territory. That's absolutely cool. And I really believe in the efficacy of palm strikes, hammer fists, forearms, elbows. I'm just not in the camp that you have to choose between the two. You know, everybody's got the time to practice and work with and experiment with all types of striking. You know, unless you're being attacked right now, this week, you've got time to practice with it, try it out, feel what's comfortable. For a lot of people under stress, the fists come out. Even very well-trained people, every well-trained combatives people, you know, very, very well-trained jujitsu people, when they start to fight another human being for real, it suddenly becomes this. This is just something we naturally do. So again, be ready for it, have a use for it. You know, and for me, using hooks as preemptive tools are often safer and my second argument for them is they're often more effective because they can shake the brain if you think about it a shot that comes down the pipe in the center will compress the head down but you've got pretty strong neck and back muscles which might stop you being knocked out things that turn your head side to side it's very hard for you to fight it and you can feel the difference between this and moving it side to side my objective here isn't to just punch him my objective is to wobble his brain inside his skull so he goes asleep, he's unconscious. So if I go for a hooking style shot, I've got more chance of shaking and rattling that brain. It's no coincidence that most boxing knockouts are from a circular shot like a hook or looping overhands, things that come around. Okay, so it's another useful aspect here. Shaking the brain, being able to turn the head really fast to shake the brain. If you're looking for a preemptive knockout shot, that's what you want to be in. That's the territory you want to play in. Shots down the pipe, absolutely can do the business, but you tend to be compressing in the head. So as well as the dangers of the teeth and fucking it up, humans can be quite strong here. They're not very strong here, especially if they don't keep their chin tucked. Another useful aspect of the hook over the straight is that when you're in kind of a fence range, when you're arguing, whether you're trying to de-escalate or escalate or whatever you're trying to, whatever soft skill you're trying to deploy as befits all of the different variables there. As he starts to get more stressed, more agitated, his field of vision goes Rrr. Humans with forward facing eyes are predators and they look at what they're hunting at. So if I try and send something straight down the middle, in a high stress scenario, he's gonna be hypersensitive and wired to anything coming up this channel. From the side, bosh, I can get around his field of vision and knock him out because the thing he doesn't see coming is the thing that will likely knock him out. So coming around his field of vision is very important. That's why hooking strikes, whether you go for a true hook or a hooking palm or whatever you're into, they tend to have much better success rate because he can't see them coming into the last minute. It's coming around his field of vision. In the same way that uppercuts are similarly successful because they come under his field of vision, hooks come around his field of vision. So again, it, it can come as a surprise, much more of a surprise than a straight. Don't worry about the differences in speed because the range will dictate what is the best technique for that scenario. The end game is to knock the man out. So things hitting right to left or left to right, have the best possibility to shake that brain. 
and your risk minimization when hitting to the side of the jaw. I've got a target that's three times as big as the tip of the jaw. I've got relatively low risk if I hit low and relatively low risk if I hit high. So there are many, many, many benefits to be able to hook bare knuckle. It's something you shouldn't take for granted. It's something you shouldn't discard because often real conflict happens more in hooking range than it does in straight range. Yeah. If you if you need to strike at this range, bam, yeah, fuck it. Palm, punch, whatever you want to do if you've got that range. But this is luxury, this is Gucci range. You know, you'd pay money for this range. Often it's this range. It's all this shit going on. Pushing, pulling, grabbing, all this kind of bollocks. So in this range, the hook is king. The hook is king here. This is where the hook lives. This is the hook's kingdom. So get used to it because if 90% of conflicts end up being this close or closer, the hook is your friend more than the Goldilocks range of this. And then you just get used to some of the different variables. Some people prefer the horizontal fist. I like, uh, sorry, the vertical fist. I like the vertical fist too, because it means my best weapons are the furthest out. My best weapon, my best knuckles, have the best chance of hitting him first. Boosh. Boosh. When you hit with a horizontal fist, like so, there is some chance that if he starts to lean back or react in any way, I start to hit him with the less good knuckles here. So if he moves his head back, bosh, I could hit him with something less than good. But I would say that you tend to get a better longer range hook with this horizontal. You get a better shorter range hook with this vertical. But a lot of people are very dogmatic with it. it must be this, or it must be this, or it must be halfway between the two. I don't really give a fuck because your wrist is your wrist and your body is your body and your situations are your situations. What I would say is experiment with all three, but understand that there is great utility for preemptive striking with circular shots as they more accurately represent the range. Your risk to yourself is decreased and your chances of that being a one and done are increased, which is what you want. You want it over very, very fast. So get used to the different ranges and being able to fire whoosh, whoosh, all of the variants of hooks with your body weight behind them, with your hip, with your shoulder, with your feet. Whoop, whoop. All of these things matter. But for me, the hook for bare knuckle striking for self-defense is unloved, sadly, but actually very, very useful. So get training it. If you're really not that comfortable, you can substitute everything for a palm strike and it'd be absolutely the same. But why choose? You don't have to. Get used to both, see what suits you best.